It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to this special edition of Science Bowl. Two middle school teams battling today to see which one is the second of this year's four middle school semifinalists. Let's meet the teams now. First from Drew Freeman Middle School, please say hello to Ina Haya, Savannah Nelson, and Dwayne Smith. And from Thomas Johnson Middle School, please welcome Christian Robinson, Mason Neal, and Marcellus Baylor. And now here are the categories of questions we use on Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on Science Bowl, our game board reflects question difficulty with the easier questions worth five and 10 points and the tougher ones, 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest question of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points, no penalties for incorrect answers. At the end of the two rounds, we will have our second semi-finalist will be joining Benjamin Tasker in this year's middle school competition. Let's make sure everything's working properly. Savannah, would you try your buzzer for me? Thank you, good luck to you, to Ina and to Duane. And Mason, would you try the green buzzer? Thank you. Good luck to you, Marcellus, and to Christian. Are we ready? Yes. yes. It's a little anemic over there. I know you guys know what you're doing. Let's have a good game. We go alphabetically D before T. So, Savannah, let's play the bowl. Green things for five. Green things for five points. Teams, while making a shelter is a universal animal need, tending one of these to grow crops and flowers is uniquely human. Drew Freeman. Land? Oh, no. Care? Oh, earth. Mm, earth. Not Earth, not Earth. Thomas Johnson, a shelter, building a shelter is a universal animal need, but tending one of these what, where you grow crops and flowers is uniquely human. A garden? A garden, that's right. Making a garden is something that really just people do. Now, of course, ants have gardens, too. They may be the exception, but they grow fungus. Try again, please, green. Um. Zoo Parade for five. Zoo Parade for five points. Teams, this small yellow melodious bird's name is also used for people who snitch and sing to the cops. They call them a what, Mason? A canary. You canary. You sang, didn't you? You betrayed the group. Go green. Um, body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, if something is really outrageously expensive, I can't believe it costs that much, it could cost you, as the saying goes, Savannah? An arm and a leg. An arm and a leg, absolutely right. I was going to say, what extremities? You were way ahead of me. Nicely done. Go. Um, green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Teams, some plants have been discovered to have what they call snow roots. The roots actually come up and go through the snow, searching for what N-initialed nutrient? Drew Freeman. Nitrogen. Nitrogen, that's right. They are searching out nitrogen, just as roots in the soil do. Nicely done. Again, red. Um, green things for 25. Green things for 25. The big one in that category, teams, lots of big words, but a simple answer. Angiosperms are plants that have flowers and seeds. Gymnosperms, like Christmas trees, have seeds but no flowers. But this last group has neither seeds nor flowers, and you find them growing on the floor of the forest, and they have fronds and spores on the back. What are they for 25 points, Thomas Johnson? Um, uh, fungus? Not a fungus, no. Drew Freeman, what are these plants that are found on the floor of the forest? They have fronds, and on their underside are spores. They have no flowers and no seeds. Ferns. Ferns is what I want to hear for 25 points. Nicely done. Go. Red. 
Zoo Parade for 10. Zoo Parade for 10 points. And Judge, could we just turn this to the red over here? That would be helpful to me. Zoo Parade for 10 points. Is that right? Yes. Zoo Parade for 10. We all know what lightning bugs are. Technically, they are fireflies, but they're not flies. Fireflies are actually a member of what largest order of insects on Earth? Thomas Johnson, a firefly is actually a kind of what? Insect. Specifically. A fly? Not a fly. No, we said it's not a fly. Fireflies are not flies. They are actually what other kind of insect that belongs to the largest group of insects on Earth? Parasite? Beetles. They are actually beetles. Try again. Red. Um, zoo parade for... No. Let's get physical for five. Let's get physical for five points. Teams, snakes have a tough time slithering across glass because there's very little what? There's very little what, Thomas Johnson? Soil. Not soil, no. Drew Freeman, a snake trying to get across glass, it has a tough time because there's very little what? Remember the category? Friction. Friction, that's right. There's nothing for those scales to grab onto. So they just slide all over the place. It's kind of funny. Go, red. Um, let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, it wouldn't happen, but if Alpha Centauri could do the foxtrot with Beetlejuice and the sun, you'd really see an episode of Dancing with the what? Drew stars. Freeman. Stars, that's right. Beetlejuice and Alpha Centauri and the sun are all stars. Go red. Um, science potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points. Teams, there's something wrong with the X-Men cartoon because the way we letter the sex chromosomes, it shouldn't be X-Men, it should be what men? Drew Freeman. Why? Why men, right. Why is the male sex chromosome? All right, go, Red. Thank you, Ina, for your assist. Um, zoo Parade for 15. Zoo Parade for 15 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Zoo Parade for 15, uh, and we'll make an adjustment, ju uh, judges. For 15 points, there's a new children's book called Going Bovine. It's all about a teenager who comes down with mad what disease? Drew Freeman. Cow. Cow is right, absolutely. Mad cow disease, bovine. <laughs> An adjective that means cow. All right, the buzzer is rung. We've come to the end of the first round. It's been mostly Drew Freeman thus far. 145, Thomas Johnson 60. They're holding their firepower for the second round. We'll be back with that in just a moment. And welcome back to Science Ball. Very important game today, as we said at the top of the show. One of these two schools will be the second of this year's middle school semifinalists. So we have a lot at stake. Both these teams have been here before and won, and that is quite obvious the way they're playing the game. Let's introduce them to you, if you didn't meet them last time, from Drew Freeman, a school we have not seen here for many, many years. And boy, what a debut you have made this year. Savannah and Dwayne and Ina, nice to have you all with us. Tell us about Drew Freeman. Where is it, Savannah? Drew Freeman is located... Uh, by Suitland. Near Suitland High School, right. And uh, let me ask you who your principal is. Our principal is Mr. Charles Wilson. Yes, and I know he's a big fan of Science Bowl. And who's the sponsor of your team? Our sponsor is Dr. O. Dr. O, and she is out there. She has been a judge on our, our game as well, so she knows it inside out. Savannah, tell us about any alternates on your team. Our alternates are Dustin and Abraham. All right, and they're out there, and they're answering the questions, even though they're not on set here. They're kind of mouthing them and telepathically sending them to you. Someday, we're going to see you doing what, Savannah? You'll see me either performing surgery or defending people in court. Wow. So you might be an attorney someday or a surgeon. And I know you sing, too, don't you? Yes. So you can be a performer as well. You've got it all going for you. You're a well-rounded young lady, and that's on display here. You play a marvelous game. You keep it up. Thank you. I, you're welcome. Ina, you're a great asset to this team. You keep whispering answers all the time. Where do you come by all your science knowledge? Um, I read a lot. So. Boy. And the, boy, that is the key. So many readers do extraordinarily well on this program. I know you like fiction, yeah. and uh, you know you'd like to write, you'd like to write someday, correct? Yes. And a, a future college professor as well, uh, and you would teach English. English. All right. Keep up your good work, Dwayne. Natalie, dressed young man over there with that wonderful red bow tie, and you're a, a natural performer because you play. The flute. the flute. So do you play in an orchestra or a band? I play in a school band and I play in an honor band. One, oh, the honor band, too. Have you been to the Kennedy Center ever? No. No, because I know some of the honors bands and choruses go to the Kennedy Center, so I hope that's in your future. That's a great place to perform and invite all your relatives. They usually do that around the holidays. Uh, 
How long have you played the flute? For about four years. Four years. And you'd like to be a professional musician someday? Yes. But you're, and uh, you're also an excellent scientist, so keep up your good work. Thomas Johnson, nice to have you guys back again. Mason, this is how many appearances for you on Science Bowl? At least three. Yeah. At least three. Uh, you were here last year, and you're back again. Tell us about Thomas Johnson. Where is it located? In Lanham. In Lanham. And your principal? Dr. Robinson. Dr. Robinson. And you have two sponsors, do you not? Yes. Who are they? Mr. Simpler and Ms. Salcedo. Right, and they were here the last time when you won, and they were all smiles as they should be, and they put in a lot of hard work to get you ready for today. Mason, uh, someday you aspire to be? A lawyer. A lawyer, that's right. You told me you win about half your arguments, and that's uh, it's not a bad average. Not a bad average. Do You had some alternates on your team, too. Who are they? Uh, Mark. Derek and Malik. Malik, and they'll be out just a few minutes so everyone can meet them. Marcellus, nice to have you back with us. A uh, young man is a football player. In his dreams, he plays for the New York Giants, and dreams come true. Plays fullback. Where do you come by your science knowledge? Well, I, I really like science. It's one of my favorite subjects, and I read a lot. You read a lot. Good. What kind of books do you like? Like... Mystery and comedy. Mystery and comedy, wonderful. And Christian, young man who aspires to be an engineer, he's a good scientist, he's a good mathematician. And why did you want to be on Science Ball, Christian? So I could learn better and learn from my mistakes. Yeah, well, you haven't made too many mistakes. You're doing a nice job here today. What do you do in your spare time? Mm, I like to read. You like to read. Boy, reading seems to be a common denominator. That's why you guys have made it so far in our competition. Let's get back to it. Drew Freeman, 145. Thomas Johnson, 60. Lots of points to give away. Still anybody's game. Start us out, Savannah. Zoo Parade for 25. For 25 in Zoo Parade. Teams, listen carefully. It's a two-part answer. Tell me what kind, give me the name of an animal that you would find in the following book and tell me why you would find it there. The book is Audubon's Quadrupeds of North America. Quadrupeds of North America. Tell me an animal that conceivably could be found in that book and why. Quadrupeds of North America for 25 points. No penalties for trying. Drew Freeman, you've got a nice lead there. Savannah, give me an animal and tell me why it might be in that book. Dogs and cats. Why? Because they both have four legs. Judges. Yes, absolutely right. That's what we were waiting for. Quadruped means four-legged, and there are certainly dogs and cats in North America. Nicely done. Go again, please. Red. Oh, um, body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, practically all human beings can taste to some degree saltiness, sweetness, and sourness. But not every human can taste this fourth basic taste. Some can't taste it at all. Which one is that? Bitterness. Did have they rung in? Bitterness. Try it again. Okay, go ahead. Bitterness. Bitterness, absolutely right. There is a certain gene that codes for bitterness. Some people do not have it. All right. Sorry for the confusion there. Try again red. Um, Dateline signs for five. Dateline for five points. Teams, an ornithologist finally confirmed that that U.S. airplane that had the lend in the Hudson River had indeed sucked into one of its engines a Canada what? Thomas Johnson. Goose. A goose. Goose, that's right. A Canada goose had been in a flock there. It sucked into Captain Sullenberger's plane, and he expertly landed it on the water, saved every life. Thank you, Marcellus. Go. Green. Uh, green things for thir uh, 15. Green things for 15 points. Seems a math question. The oldest living green thing on earth is a bristle cone pine that has been alive five times ten to the third years meaning it's been around how many years drew freeman five thousand you got it ten to the third is five thousand years the oldest living thing on earth go red um science potpourri for ten Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, there are lots of precious stones, diamonds and rubies and emeralds, but of all those precious stones, the one that is called an organic gem is this one that is literally produced inside of an oyster. Thomas Johnson. A pearl. A pearl, that's right, a pearl. The lining, the nacre inside the shell of the pearl. Good, nice comeback. All right, you need some more points. Come on, Mason. Uh, Dateline science for 10. Dateline for 10 points. Teams, your, answer, your question is as follows. Every year, all across the country, women and men march for the cure. They race for the cure. They wear pink ribbons. Drew Freeman? Cancer. 
breast cancer. Breast cancer, absolutely right. They're drawing attention to a terrible disease. All right, nicely done. Go, red. Um, Zupre for 20. Zupre, 20 points, teams. Look at the monitor in the studio, please, for your question. Teams, this is not an elephant. This is a taper. It is a herbivore that lives in South America. But like its, unlike its cousin in Africa, the elephant, this herbivore has what kind of tooth in its mouth that is only find, found in carnivores? Mason. A tooth. I, again? A canine tooth. A canine tooth. Absolutely right. Nicely done. It has a canine tooth. We think they use it, the males use it for fighting each other. Good. Green. Um, body systems. Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, the ancient Egyptians would have had no need for an MRI machine had one been available because they did not value this organ at all, thinking the heart is where it all took place in the body. Prue Freeman. The lungs? Not the lungs. Oh. The Egyptians, ancient Egyptians, would have had very little use for an MRI machine because they didn't think this organ was of much use, thinking that everything took place in the heart. The brain. The brain, that's right. In fact, when they would embalm them before they were mummified, they would draw, they would suck the brain out through the nostrils and throw it away. Go green. Green things for 10. Green things, 10 points. Teams, your question is as follows. National Geographic described these trees this way. They are the size of Saturn rockets. They sprout from the ground like giant beanstalks, and their butts are covered with darkened black from fires. What green things are they talking about, Drew Freeman? Maple tree? No. Not maple trees. Thomas Johnson, they're the size of Saturn rockets. They burst from the ground like giant beanstalks. Giant redwoods. Redwoods, the biggest things on earth, the biggest trees on earth. Try again, green. Um, You're thinking too small. Body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. Teams, if you catch the H1N1 flu, you got it because you caught a virus, which can weaken your lungs so much that you develop pneumonia, which is caused not by a virus, but by a what? Thomas Johnson. Uh, um, a disease? No, I want to know what causes the pneumonia. Uh, the virus causes the flu, which weakens the lungs to such an extent that you can develop pneumonia, which is not caused by a virus, but was caused by a what? Bacterium. That's right, a bacterium. It is a bacterial pneumonia. Nicely done. Good comeback, red. Um... Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. Teams, there are a number of non-polluting energy sources on Earth, like the wind and the sun. They're now investigating another non-polluting free energy source that scientists monitor by using buoys. What energy source is that? Drew Freeman. Let's see hydrogen? Can, not hydrogen. Yeah. They're using buoys to monitor what other free, non-polluting energy source here on Earth. Um. Water. More specifically. Um, oceans. Salt water. More. Um, oceans. Oceans. Well, what's the source of the energy? Uh, um, algae. No. Waves and tides. The movement, the waves and the tides that the buoys monitor. Try again green. Oh, well, um, Dateline science for 15. Dateline for 15 points. Teams, back in 1912, scientist Wilbur Scoville invented the Scoville heat unit scale. It went from zero to a million, and it measured the sizzle of jalapeno cayenne savannah. Peppers. Peppers. That's the scale on how hot the peppers can be. The mildest is the green pepper. The other is off the charts. Go, green. Uh, excuse me, red. Um, science potpourri for 15. Science potpourri, 15 points. Teams, boy, this is disturbing. 95% of our American money, our paper American money, is contaminated what, with what illegal narcotic? Yeah, Thomas Johnson. It's a narcotic. Yes, sir. Weed? Not weed. Good try. What illegal narcotic contaminates 95% of our paper money? 
Cocaine? Cocaine, yes indeed. People roll it up and snort with it and it, it the dust is everywhere. Go. Thank you, Dwayne. Go, Savannah. Um let's get physical for twenty five. Let's get physical for twenty five points. Teams two minutes left in our game. Every night, most every night, the moon shines in the sky. But the moon is dead. It produces no light of its own. It's not a star. Why does it shine? Why does it shine for twenty five points, Thomas Johnson? The reflection of the sun. Yep, that's right. It's the reflect reflected light of the sun. Nicely done. Thank you, gentlemen. Go, Mason. Body systems for 25. Body systems 25, big one in that category. Teams, what glands in your body swell up and get very tender if you come down with a case of the mumps? Mmm, tough one, Savannah. Taste buds? No, good try. Thomas Johnson, what glands in your body swell up and get very tender if you come down with a case of the mumps? Yeah, um, veins and arteries? Your salivary glands, your salivary glands. Very close to the taste buds, nice try. Go again, please, green. Um, 20, I mean, I, I, science, po uh, science potpourri for 20. Science potpourri for 20, it's multiple choice question teams. The windmills that are appearing all over the country now, the giant windmills, are killing bats in record numbers. They are dying of barrow trauma, barrow trauma. It's because they are colliding with the blades, they're being blown into other objects, or the pressure is dropping so much that their lungs explode. Thomas Johnson. They're uh, blow, I mean, they're uh, running into the. Uh, they're not the running into the blades. Blow. No. Are they running into the blades? Are they being blown into other objects? Or are their lungs exploding as the pressure drops? They are dying as a result of barrow trauma. Barrow trauma. Barrow trauma has to do with air pressure. Air. So, oh, so air their lungs their lungs explode. explode. Absolutely right, because barrow oh. is a prefix that means pressure. Boy, Ina, you figured that one out, and that's why Drew Freeman is going to be our second semifinalist. We'll be back with a wrap up in just a moment. Don't go away. And welcome back to Science Bowl. Boy, some tough questions today, but equally tough competitors. I love to watch their minds work today. They did splendidly. We're proud of all six of our players, and indeed, all of our players, including the alternates. Our final tally today is Thomas Johnson, 135. Drew Freeman, 275. What a performance. Ina and Savannah and Dwayne, congratulations. You're headed to the semifinals. Abraham, I know you're very proud of the team, too. And Miss Eba, thank you for being here. And we thank Dustin Limerick as well. Thomas Johnson, let's see some smiles, guys. You gave a great performance. Christian and Mason and Marcellus and the shadow team back there, Mark and Malik and Derek. Ms. Sacedo, Mr. Simpler, thank you for all your hard work in getting everybody ready for today. We enjoyed having you. We enjoyed having you as well. We'll see you next time on another edition of Science Bowl. Bye now.